Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. This time I have something really interesting for you and this is the CEA8 mini gimbal. This is a brushless gimbal setup that works with actual brushless motors and not like a servo setup that can be uh, some kind of janky. It has a 4K image sensor and can record videos at 30 frames per second. Usually this type of gimbal is made for multi-rotor drones uh, that can hover in the air with GPS assistance and then you can look around and uh, take shots, uh, videos, photos, etc. And uh, in this case C has provided the gimbal for me for free to test it on an actual fixed ring. This is also a disclaimer, as I said this gimbal was provided by C for free so I have not paid for anything. And uh, they have actually tested this type of or this gimbal already on fixed wing aircraft, but uh, more like slow cruisers. And I was a little bit skeptical about how well this will actually work, especially if we have wings that are much faster than like a Bixler style plane. And uh, they said, hey, if you want to try it, we can send you one. And um, yeah, now here we are. And I have inserted that on my AR Wing Pro. So we can test this in flight at higher speeds. I already tested that setup on an earlier day, like two weeks ago. Unfortunately, it was very windy that day, but I will show you some footage of that flight here. Um, the gimbal has an interesting, let's say, problem or feature. Uh, the roll angle is limited to 30 degree maximum and there is a physical stop actually. And in the past or in the early firmware versions um, there was a reset. So if the gimbal hit that mechanical stop it just reset it for a moment and when the craft leveled out then the gimbal will start working again. But with a recent firmware update they changed that. And the limit for that is now five minutes. So if you are in a long turn or in a, in a position hold with a fixed ring, you don't get that completely gimbal shut down anymore. The gimbal has two main function modi you can control via SBUS. That's the FPV mode that's active here. So the gimbal follows the plane movement on the roll axis and yaw is also stabilized but locked to the aircraft orientation. Only pitch is adjustable but still stabilized. And then there is the follow mode that's shown here where the horizon is always level. And you can basically move the gimbal around uh, its yaw axis and its pitch axis to look in any direction you want. But this of course uh, is still limited by the physical 30 degree roll angle. So if you bank hard with your fixed ring then you might hit that angle and the behavior can be a little bit wonky. Enough talking, let's bring the AR Pro in the air and then we can film something that's already circling up there. When I launch the plane I usually do that in FPV mode. As you can see then the gimbal will follow the plane movement and does not hit the hard 30 degree uh, stop. And the stabilization with moderate winds as I had them here like 15 kilometers per hour roughly uh, is very well stabilized and now I switched into the follow mode and I will come to that slightly crooked horizon a little bit later in the video as well. Uh, this video was recorded in 4K resolution. In 4K there is no zoom available. You have seen how the zoom works in the previous clip. I will show you a little bit more of that later as well. But here I fly around in the follow mode and switch back to Kimber now. As you can see you can do that in flight and you can see how well it stabilizes also uh, in the FPV feed of course. In this FPV mode that I have active now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can only adjust the pitch angle. This is usually helpful for drones, for multi-rotor drones if you fly forward. So you can adjust your pitch angle for different speeds to still look forward. Uh, you have no control over yaw or roll in this mode. But in general you cannot control the ro roll motion at all. This is always auto level in the follow mode. And you have only control over yaw and pitch in this one. 
After a while flying around and searching, I finally found my XUAV clouds doing an endurance mission here. I will put out a video about that later as well. And I set up the same mission on the AR Pro to follow it. But as you can see, the AR Pro is definitely faster than the clouds in cruise flight. So I quickly passed it and with the uh, FPV mode only on pitch control, it was hard to point the camera to the to the other airplane. So I switched to uh, the follow mode a little bit later and here you can see the problem with the crooked horizon again. So the problem here is that the gimbal has horizon drift if I do a long turn as I did before that video clip. Um, the accelerometer will get false readings relative to gravity to the gravity vector and this causes the same kind of horizon drift as we had in the past with INAV. Unfortunately with INAV there is currently no way I could find to uh, mitigate that. Um, with autopilot the gimbal can directly control with the flight controller and get the actual attitude data with all the algorithms to not have horizon drift uh, in place and get the attitude data from the airplane or multicopter or whatever you fly. So uh, this can, this works better on autopilot currently. We will see if we can later find a way to implement this in INAV if INAV gets a direct support of the C gimbal API. And here again with the same waypoint mission I catch up with the uh, XUAV clouds and we nearly pass it again so it's like 10-15 km per hour difference in speed here. And I try my best to keep it in focus but uh, the AR Pro passes it pretty fast but this time as I am in the follow mode I can turn around on the yaw axis. The gimbal has I think a 270 degrees uh, turning angle but if you go then from screen edge to screen edge you can basically look 180 degrees around you. So by looking left and right and turn turning the gimbal I was able to keep the clouds in view for a while. But of course I couldn't zoom in here. First of all it would just zoom into the center and secondly uh, this was in 4K resolution and there is no way to zoom in at all. In general it's pretty hard to do aircraft to aircraft recordings because uh, you have the plane movement you cannot really control an emission and if you want to fly the plane yourself and at the same time control the gimbal this can be very confusing. So for this kind of stuff it might help to have a second person next to you that uses the trainer mode and controls the gimbal with a separate radio so you don't have to focus on that. In theory you could even use two different VTX, one for the gimbal, one for the pilot and uh, control them separately for this kind of stuff. After all these tests were done, uh, I came in for landing. For this, of course, I had to switch to a fixed pilot's cam pilot camera because in stabilized mode, even in FPV mode, it's really hard uh, to land the plane without having a feel uh, how much it's moving and uh, precisely control the descent. So uh, a fixed FPV camera is much more helpful with this. And as you can see, the gimbal doesn't really bother about the landing and the uh, vibration. It gets a little shake and after that it centers pretty well. This is now a recording of the other flight two weeks ago where it was very windy and um, here I recorded with the gimbal in 2.7K and as you can see I can now use the focus in that resolution. Keep in mind this is just a digital focus not an optical one so the image is actually just cropped and you can zoom in further than the actual resolution relative to the sensor so the final resolution of the maximum zoom will be much lower than on the um, than the actual recording resolution. The zoom is pretty good uh, and it's still stable enough to see any details. You have a little bit of shaking, uh, the strong winds like 70-75 km per hour airspeed is really hard to do for the gimbal. And here I switched into the FPV mode where I have just a forward view and can just adjust the pitch angle. And even here you can zoom in and uh, look closer at things. This is very helpful for stuff like aerial photography or um, searching for animals in fields before 
um, before harvesting. So this is a really nice feature to have on a, a fixed ring UAV. After the test flights, let's look at the gimbal itself. So this is about the size here in comparison with a GoPro Hero 6. Uh, it's a little bit bigger in the total front profile. It's about the size of a Hero 9 uh, to Hero 11. But it has a little bit less air resistance because, of course, the air can flow better over it or through the components between the camera and the main body. But in total, uh, it's about the size of a current generation GoPro. Here on the front, you have a USB-C port. This can be used to update the firmware and to configure the gimbal. But it's not possible to access the SD card storage over USB. So you have to remove the SD card to use uh, or to download your video files. On the right side, there is the SD card slot. I have tested it with up to 128 gigabytes. That's also stated as the maximum on the specifications. And on the left side here, you have a port for the serial connection and S bus control as well, where you connect it to your flight controller or to your receiver, whatever you will use. Here on the back side, we have the micro HDMI output. Micro HDMI output. Uh, this big connector has the analog video out as well as a network port where you can connect it to a Raspberry Pi or some other companion computer over a network interface. And on top of that, there is the power input that can handle between 3S and 6S battery voltage without additional regulators. Let's talk a bit about the video quality. As you could see from the footage, the video quality is decent. Um, it's not as good as a current GoPro generation, maybe not even as good as a, a Hero 6. But in general, uh, let's say it's on the level of a Runcam 2 4K, for example. But considering the price here from the CE website itself, $242 or on AliExpress for $280 for a few complete gimbal system, including the camera, this is actually a pretty decent price uh, for the quality it delivers. And um, you don't have the rate penalty you have with a dedicated gimbal combined with a current action cam as you don't have to have separate batteries and double the housing that adds up. And in total, this one is just 95 grams. And I think it's a pretty decent solution if you want to have stabilized footage with a big uh, movement range. And here are the complete specifications of the camera with the different uh, resolutions and all the specs that are interesting. Not everything is perfect with the gimbal, of course. I have mentioned uh, most of the problems that I faced uh, in the previous part of the video already and you have seen in the image. Uh, the biggest problem currently is the horizon drift in the follow mode. Uh, as I said before, with autopilot you don't have to worry about that. You just wire up your gimbal with your flight controller uh, over a UART interface and the flight controller will, will give the gimbal the correct attitude data to compensate for that. With INAV this is actually not possible at this point. I have tried a little bit with Mafling telemetry but that didn't work out unfortunately. Another important thing to consider is that if you use SPAS control for pitch and yaw input, you cannot directly control the gimbal like you would with a pan and tilt system. So if you use sliders, um, it acts like a joystick and not like a direct positioning of the gimbal. This is also feedback I gave to CE and I hope they will work on that on a future firmware update uh, that you have absolute control like with the zoom that you can put the slider all the way to the le to the left and the gimbal will turn the to the left and if you center the slider that the gimbal will center back. But this might also change if we implement the C camera API into INAF directly because then this is actually possible. 
These are points you have to keep in mind if you want to set this up on any craft. Right now I recommend it more for multi-rotor use. Also it's very interesting for autopilot users as it's fully implemented there. I hope we get that done in INAV soon as well. Also interesting will be when Rocksnake comes with their new VTX they have announced that has an HDMI input because then this gimbal could be combined with an HD digital FPV system as well. Okay, what do you think about that CEA8 mini gimbal? Would you consider it for one of your future crafts or not? Leave a comment in the comment section and uh, tell me what you think about it. As always, thanks for watching the video to the end and if you liked it then please give a thumbs up as well and we will see us in the next one. Bye bye!